зараз продовжуємо репортаж про конференцію «Україна на роздоріжжі», яка відбулася в Отаві на початку цього місяця. Конференція мала на меті обговорити питання демократії, прав людини та зовнішньої політики сучасної України. Минулого разу ми повідомили про панельну дискусію на тему «Куди йдеш, Україна?», якою почалася міжнародна конференція «Україна на роздоріжжі» в Отаві. На другий день рано всі на час зібралися розглядати питання майбутнього України і вислухати доповіді 32 експертів з України, Європи, Канади і Сполучених Штатів Америки. Серед цікавих сесій дуже важливою була пленарна презентація на сумну, але важливу тему – авторитарний режим в Росії і як Росія старається відмережити Україну від Європи. Модератором був адвокат міжнародних справ Роберт Емстердем, який закликав міжнародне суспільство осуджувати отверту нахабність державного проводу в Росії. Do not allow any representative of any Western government to tell you that there's nothing they can do about what happens in Russia. We can change Russia today. We can change Russia today. The assets being held for Vladimir Putin are in the billions of dollars. We need to find them. We need to segregate them, and we need to freeze those bank accounts. The assets of Mr. Yanukovych and many of his friends are also easily identifiable, and we should tell him we won't sanction Ukraine, we will sanction him. We need to be specific, we need to be focused, and we can change how governments behave through that type of activity. We need to stop telling our politicians that what WikiLeaks has taught us is we've got to stop being lied to. There is no benefit in secretly saying that Russia is a mafia state and publicly saying we need to reset. You don't reset with the mob. Легендарний політолог Андрей П'янтковський з Москви заявив, що розвиток демократії в Росії залежить від успіху демократичних процесів в Україні. Uh, from the beginning of foreign revolution. The success story of uh, uh, Ukraine uh, would be a decisive factor in, uh, in, other, in other battle for, for democracy, European option and, uh, and human dignity. Головний дискутант Джейн Шер із Британського Королівського інституту міжнародних справ у Лондоні підкреслив, що Україна сама собі ворогом, бо дотепер жодний український уряд не старався відмежитися від Росії, виробляючи собі енергетичну самодостатність prepared prognoses and plans as to how Ukraine could significantly diminish, diminish its dependency on Russia if it restructured and reformed the energy sector. No Ukrainian government has taken any recommendation of this kind seriously, none, including the tandem of з другої сторони, політолог Андрей П'янтковський із Москви додав, що Німеччина зовсім не заохочувала Україну вступати в Євросоюз. Що робили Європейська Юніна і Германія, спеціально, щоб вирішити Україну європейську аспірацію during Ющенка президенції? По моєму погляду, ви бити all possible, all in our power to discourage them just to please uh, uh, your uh, close friend, Mr. Putin, and to get uh, northern flow transition. From Ukrainian perspectives, perspective, um, as from the perspective as many of many Eastern European countries, 
I understand very well that they have concerns if Germany is dealing with Russia and that they feel uncomfortable if Medvedev and Merkel are opening a new pipeline in the Baltic Sea. I can understand that. On the other hand, um, for example, the letter written by five ministers of foreign affairs concerning Ukraine last week was also signed by the German minister of foreign affairs. There is a common position within the European Union expressed by Mr. Van Rompuy and by others and Germany is supporting this common position. There is no separate position of Germany apart from a European position towards Ukraine. Головний дискутант Джеймс Шер ясно бачить, що політика президента Януковича без сумніву шкодить Україні. President Yanukovych uh, because of the way he construes his own political interest is willing uh, and has demonstrated uh, a willingness to damage and continue to damage the national interests of Ukraine. And in such circumstances, there is very little useful that the EU can do. The EU has, uh, first of all, the EU has wisely, despite all of this, completed the association agreement. The negotiations went through to the very end. It's sitting out there. And the fact that it's sitting there is saying, when you take its contents seriously, we'll sign it. Паралельно до цього всього, основною проблемою для України є історичне шовіністичне наставлення Росії до України. The core problem with Russia is that Russians, uh, most, many large spectrum of Russians across the spectrum, whether they support the current regime or not, regard Ukraine as part of their own identity and therefore do not feel they're looking at Ukraine in imperial terms. But this identity issue and the aggressive identity politics being pursued uh, by Putin and Medvedev and the Kremlin ex exacerbates every other serious issue that exists, geopolitical, commercial, uh, energy, security. And that is not going away. And now that Mr. Putin is back, uh, if anything, there will be an intensification of what is already too intense. To Putin, Ukraine is little Russia, and uh, we should not underestimate uh, his need for foreign policy victories at a time when he is uh, bankrupt ideologically in respect to what he's going to do with Russia. At the same time, this culture of impunity we have in Russia clearly is now and, and has been in Ukraine and the relationship between these two clans and the oligarchs is very dangerous in terms of uh, the further retardation of institutional development in Ukraine. So I think, I think it's a terribly serious problem. Uh, Putin is uh, perhaps more dangerous in this iteration because uh, he is fully convinced not only that he has impunity, but he believes that this phony uh, uh, event, I can't call it an election, this event will uh, give him some legitimacy again. So I think we all have to uh, stand on guard in terms of trying to help Ukraine, and that's why I'm so impressed by what the community has been doing. There has been very little pushback to this, because the West is very conscious of Russia's geopolitical perspective about Ukraine and its economic and energy interests, but this identity issue, what Russia calls the humanitarian dimension of its policy, what should be called Russian soft power, is very poorly appreciated in the West. Uh, and it doesn't simply operate in Ukraine, it operates elsewhere through supporting so-called compatriots, who are so loosely defined, the category can mean virtually anybody connected with Russia, or the, that Russia or the former Soviet Union have influenced. Uh, in the past. And the West has not um, thought about how uh, you can respond to this. Uh, it has not, we have done pitifully little, even at a non-governmental level, to have experts, historians, uh, scholars strengthen their colleagues abroad uh, to develop another kind of language uh, that, that can argue in these principled terms about what sort of Europe we want to create. The Russians are doing this in a very, uh, in a, in a very 
in a very concrete, evocative way. The media presence backs this up. Uh, their business interests profoundly back it up. And this dimension is largely missing from our own policy. Більше наступних програмах.